So I know I'm a couple days late on this whole story and whatnot, and you guys have been blowing me up about this one, but uh, we're finally going to talk about it today and kind of give an update because I have talked about this before. I remember when this first kind of happened, and the World Health Organization had kind of first came up with gaming disorder, and it was being used as part of some new definitions or some new category of different mental illnesses last year that they had created. I, I can't really remember the full details of that, but today we're going to be talking about how it it is official. This is actually real, okay? They, they have gone forward even with all of the negative attention, all of the, uh, the, the bad thoughts, all of the testimonies from, you know, actual mental health experts and researchers who say that gaming disorder altogether is just not only a name that isn't going to, I guess, accurately describe the problem itself, but also is likely going to be a blanket statement for a broader perceived problem, you know, that, that, that's been argued for pretty much ever since they came up with this whole thing. I think you guys know that. So, according to the World Health Organization, gaming disorder is now an official medical diagnosis, okay? If you actually show the symptoms and whatnot, you can be completely prescribed, I guess, something to combat quote-unquote gaming disorder. I mean, if, if it's already a medical diagnosis, I would assume you can go to the doctor and they're going to completely prescribe, I don't know, they're going to prescribe you with some sort of rehab or something because it, it's apparently an addiction. Don't really know the full details of all that yet. This has only been news for a couple of days, so I'm pretty sure the medical world is still completely adapting to this as well. Or maybe I'm wrong and they've had plenty of time to kind of get ready for this and they've been preparing for this to come around for years now and you know you never know that there's the possibility I guess so just to give you guys a quick perspective into how many people play video games just in the United States um, about well last year about 167 million Americans played a video or mobile game the US population I think is like 323 million people uh, that's off the top of my head. I, I I don't know. I think it's pretty close to that somewhere around there. Okay, so I just looked it up. Apparently, I was just a tad bit wrong. It's 327.2 million people. So a huge portion of the United States is playing video games. That, that considers pretty much like all age ranges, everything. Like all the demographics have been worked out. 167 million people playing video games, and that number is growing every single year. Okay, gaming gets bigger and bigger every single year. So, you know... Out of pretty much the whole population, 167 million people are now facing this gaming disorder, okay? Now, before we go any further into this, okay, I need to clarify this because I know a lot of people are under the impression that gaming addiction is not a real thing. I don't know why people have that idea, but you can 100% be addicted to a video game. I don't care what anyone says, I play video games. You can get addicted to a video game. I mean, you can get addicted to anything. Like I've said, you know, a couple different times now. I remember this one episode on TV of some show where this woman was addicted to eating furniture. People with addictive personalities will pick up pretty much anything and get addicted to it. That just, that's how they work, you know? Their, their brains work differently. Humans are just creatures of habit. Once you get really used to doing something, it releases dopamine and whatnot in your brain. It makes you happy. You feel safe. Whatever it is, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of different factors that boil down to that basic nature of humans. Once you start feeling good about something and you have that addictive personality, it's already becoming a threat of being something you become addicted to. That, that's just how it is. Does that mean that everybody who plays a video game gets addicted to it? No, of course not. The vast majority of people who play video games are not addicted to them, okay? So this is an important distinction to make coming up. They're saying that the diagnosis isn't quote, just gaming too much. It's apparently a disorder only when it interferes with like your daily life and activities that you would normally take. Like if you start to kind of lose control over how much you're playing video games and you start like, I guess, holding video games on a pedestal over like your other interests, like, I don't know, hanging out with your friends, going to baseball matches, you know, going and playing basketball with your friends, going to the gym, going to work, stuff like that, okay? If, if like, the rest of your life is taking a backseat to video games and you can't control it, apparently that's when they make the diagnosis, okay? And on paper, that looks fine, right? Like, oh, okay, so only when it gets to this point are they ever going to really say this is what this is. However, this is my problem with this. Number one, if you honestly believe this is how a lot of doctors are going to diagnose quote-unquote gaming disorder, 
you're just sorely mistaken. I mean, personally speaking, I think sometimes we already overdiagnose mental health issues in the country. And that's not to say that like these aren't problems, right? Like mental health is not a problem. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that, you know, doctors make money when they prescribe you things. When they prescribe you medication, when they get you going in and out of their office all the time, they, they make a lot of money doing that. I 100% believe that there are doctors who will just blatantly prescribe you, you know, antidepressants or some sort of medication. Even if you don't have this problem and you think you do, they will trick you into doing so simply so they can make more profit. Big Pharma in general loves mental health issues because they make a fuck ton of money using that as something to peddle pills into people's mouths with. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't take your medication if you legitimately have these problems. What I'm saying is of course mental health is one of those things where it's not it's not necessarily like the flu right when you when you have all these different symptoms of the flu they're pretty much all like rock solid on what you're gonna have right a lot of those like infections and stuff like you get these these straight up symptoms of it and you're like oh shit i have this mental health is almost like this cloud in a way because like so many different symptoms of things can be symptoms of other problems it, it's so weird like the truth is is we don't understand as much about he mental health as we like to pretend that we do and that definitely goes for me too i'm just speaking on personal opinion here but this i feel like is definitely going to be a blanket statement eventually and people who you know aren't necessarily prioritizing gaming over everything else like a kid who maybe plays all day after he gets done with his homework and and hanging out with his friends and whatnot plays late into the night i feel like we're gonna have parents start taking them in freaking out oh he's got gaming disorder he's got gaming disorder and even though this kid is not prioritizing video games over everything else even though this kid is not prioritizing video games over his own well-being but simply because he quote plays too much he's going to be diagnosed by these doctors who either are purposely misdiagnosing him for profit or this doc these doctors aren't going to understand what gaming disorder is okay because the truth is is you know you, you don't see too many young doctors i feel like i feel like a lot of doctors are just older people i've had a few young doctors but for the most part doctors i feel like are just like older men and women right most of them probably don't play video games most of them i don't think are going to sit here and read the full definition of gaming disorder and try to really understand it before diagnosing things i'm just saying that there's a lot of overlap for problems with these diagnoses okay just because gaming dis disorder like as a word really are two words in a phrase right it can be used as such a huge blanket statement like you can use you can basically say gaming disorder for anything right like let's say you know cancer of the brain right very self-explanatory it, it's cancer in a very specific part of the body to be diagnosed with cancer of the brain you have to have cancer in your brain gaming disorder it's going i guarantee it i we come back to this in a year two years three years whenever they start to really implement this and they start diagnosing people with this stuff i can almost guarantee you that we will start to see stories where kids are being misdiagnosed with this and they're being told that they have problems that they don't have and, and you're gonna see a big problem out of that okay you're, you're going to see that if this is going i feel like to become more of a problem than it's actually trying to solve because yes gaming addiction is a very real thing you know licking knives addiction can be a very real thing but apparently a person has to show a year of symptoms to receive a diagnosis but this also says in most cases and like i said who knows if doctors are really going to stick to these actual principles of diagnosis really and and remain honest about this a lot of things can happen a lot of problems i can already vision envision happening you know i can already see so many different things happening and i think a lot of you can too because while i agree that gaming addiction is a very real thing that we should be taking seriously and it is definitely a problem for people i feel like not only is this term just harmful to the gaming scene in general gaming disorder but it also doesn't do itself justice it doesn't do the problem it's trying to solve justice now of course the video game industry has been opposing this classification okay they they don't like this because they might lose money they might lose influence of course they say that it recklessly trivializes real mental health issues i somewhat agree somewhat don't i do believe gaming addiction is a real mental health issue now the esa also known as the electronic 
or I'm sorry, the Entertainment Software Association says, quote, the World Health Organization knows the common sense and objective research prove video games are not addictive. This statement is blatantly false. I mean, it's, it's very self-explanatory. Like I said, you can become addicted to pretty much anything, video games, they, they are pretty much a safe space for some people. Like, you come home from a shitty job. You hate this job. You're thinking about killing yourself. You hate this job so much. You boot up Minecraft and play for 13 hours. All of a sudden, hey, you're not thinking about work no more. You're happy. You're in a happy place. You're having fun with your friends. If it becomes to the point where you can't stop playing Minecraft, you play it for 18 hours a day, you quit your job, you know, you stop showering and going to see your friends and whatnot, I would definitely say that's an addiction. I think we can all agree that that is addiction. So it is very harmful, I feel like, for them to say that this is not a real thing. Because video game addiction is a real thing. Is it what the media has been making it out to be? I don't think so. Is it what the World Health Organization has been making it out to be? I don't think so. But is it a real thing? Of course it is. Okay, of course it is. The American Psychiatric Association estimates that between 0.3% and 1% of the world population suffers from gaming disorder or upwards of 75 million people. That is a shit ton of people. I don't know about that. That is of course just an estimate. I, I just, I feel like there's a lot of problems with gaming disorder in general right now. I feel like we need a lot more research from a lot of like either global health organizations, national health organizations working together. I think more evidence needs to be there. And I think in reality, the thing with gaming disorder is, you know, a lot of times video game addiction and things like that, I feel like are almost like precursors to other mental health issues that aren't being diagnosed or treated. Some dude's depressed, wants to kill himself all the time, plays 11 hours of Call of Duty a day to make himself feel better, you know? I wouldn't 100% call that just a gaming addiction, you know what I said? You know what I'm saying, right? I, I would totally consider that more than just gaming addiction. I hope that they find a way to clear everything up here because God knows that they need to. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on my channel. Follow me over on Twitter at Subtoptimus. I post meme thoughts and updates over there. It's a surefire way to get notifications of all my newest content. Join the Discord down below. Lots of great things going on down there. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. If you'd like to become one and help support my content for only $5 a month, you can do so by hitting the join button down below and until my next video guys this is optimus having gaming disorder and signing out